I mean, the last time I saw Lawrence, I saw Walter Land driving a backhoe up towards the north end of the property where she lived. Around the last time I saw her, I also heard the sound of gunshots. It is a new twist on an unsolved mystery that still haunts Ontario Cottage Country. The disappearance of four senior citizens, retirees in the Muskoka region north of Toronto, who vanished without a trace. Never seen again, no bodies ever found. Two decades later, they're still missing and presumed murder. And they each had one thing in common. When they disappeared, all lived in retirement homes operated by a local family, the Lands. In particular, by the three Land brothers, David, Walter, and Paul. Their uncle, Ron Allen, and their sister, Catherine Land. Alice Petty says her friend Catherine was a recruiter for her family's elder care facilities. She would go to Toronto and um, find people who had no connection to any other people really and she would entice them and say you know I have a nice retirement home up north and it's a beautiful place. In all the Lands had three retirement homes outside Huntsville Ontario with names like Cedar Pines, Fern Glen Manor and this one on Siding Lake known locally as the Land Family Farm. From the outside, they seemed idyllic retreats for people from hostels or homeless shelters in Toronto. But those who saw the houses from the inside say it was a different story. My dogs have a better place to stay, like a neater, cleaner place to stay than, than uh, where those people were. Contractor Jeff Vanderkloot was hired to do work at one of the homes. I was taken back by the condition of the place and the conditions that they had to live in. In the room next was an old man just laying in bed. He was just laying there moaning and groaning. It just seemed very strange to me that this man would just have a, be in an open room moaning and groaning and, and, and thought to myself, boy, if my grandfather was here, he'd be going in the truck with me right now. And was this known widely in Muskoka, that, that this is what they were doing? Um, no, I don't believe so. Until the late 90s, those homes had been operating under the radar with no questions asked. But that would change when the local authorities discovered that not all the land's residents were housed inside the care facility. Indeed, one lived outside in a decrepit garden shed, even in the depths of winter. No insulation, just shingles. A little it looked to me no like a little water. Oh no, no running water, or... no toilet, nothing. No, just a just a little double door things on it. Just a just something you put your your lawnmower in or your rakes and your, your garden tools. It, you wouldn't even put anything that you really like in there, let alone a person to live. The person living in that shed was a 77-year-old woman named Joan Lawrence, known locally as the Cat Lady, because she shared her 10 by 10 foot space with 30 cats. She would soon be the first resident to disappear, but not the last. I don't think anybody would have ever found out where did the cat lady go? And then they found out she, was, she had been at the, at the land property and it all went from there. Ralph Grant, Doogie to his friends, also came to live in one of the land's retirement homes. Once in the automotive parts business, Doogie's nephew Howard says Grant fell on hard times and that he was told by police his uncle had been targeted by the land family while living in a Toronto shelter. Oh, I think he was taking advantage myself. Uh, I think if somebody's promised you a nice, quiet life for half the price, you know, it's a kind of a holding up a lollipop to a child. And like, you know, it turned out to be a horror show. Eventually, Doogie Grant would disappear too as would two other residents of the land homes, 70-something John Crofts, a shoe salesman from Toronto, and Irish-born farm worker John Semple, who was in his 90s. The lands claimed they had no idea where they went, though at the time, strangely, the landlords never reported any of their residents missing to the police. But despite the silence of the lands, in 1998, an up-and-coming young detective with the Ontario Provincial Police named Aaron Burke 
got wind of the case. She began to look into what happened to the cat lady. I was assigned to investigate a possible missing female by the name of Joan Lawrence. It was all 20 years ago. Detective Burke is now retired, but the Ontario Provincial Police still won't allow us to speak to her about the investigation. And in the very beginning, they were looking for, um, they, were looking, they were looking at a check. So this past year, the Fifth Estate teamed up with the Walrus Magazine to go to court asking for access to Detective Burke's reports that had been sealed for two decades. Is there any indication whose signature it is? Do we see that anywhere? I think there's a lot of inference about whose signature it might be, but I don't think we actually see that. Yeah. We got almost 500 pages of previously secret police notes, though much of what they contained was redacted. So recently we went back to court and succeeded in getting many of those files released in their entirety which means we've learned details that were blacked out for decades from a police source who lived in the land retirement home from which Joan Lawrence disappeared. His name is Al Marshall, and he became Detective Burke's primary contact, quietly providing information as she went from investigating a missing person case to a homicide. We've dramatized that investigation with an actor speaking words adapted from Burke's reports. I have been living here for approximately one year. Joan Lawrence already lived here when I moved to this place. It was Al Marshall who first reported that Joan Lawrence went missing in the fall of 1998. I haven't seen her in at least three weeks, which is highly unusual. Also unusual, according to Joan Lawrence's friend Linda Charbonneau, was that when she disappeared, Lawrence was in the middle of a dispute with the Lands, who she believed were meddling in her finances and bank account. And I said, oh, well, I guess you should better look into that. So she goes, I'm going to look into that. Charbonneau says Joan told her she intended to confront her landlords about it. And did you hear back about what she found? No, I didn't. Uh, I don't. I don't think I remember seeing her after that. Really, literally, that was the last time you may have seen her? I think so, yeah. And according to bank records the police got, Joan Lawrence had reason to question her landlord's involvement in her money. She told friends she didn't trust the lands and to call the police if anything happened to her. So now the question was where was Joan? With money a motive, Detective Burke reported finding something she believed could unlock the case. I telephoned the Toronto Dominion Bank. She confirmed that Lawrence had an account there and added that it was a joint account. That joint account was with her landlord, David Lamb, a red flag that also led police to another name that kept coming up, the Lamb's uncle, Ron Allen, who helped to run the retirement homes. It has been determined from several witness interviews that Alan had a great deal of contact with Lawrence. Alan also picked up her mail, or would drive her to pick up her mail. He drove her to the food bank. He drove her to pick up her cat food. And he would drive her to the bank to get her money. To police, something was wrong. Joan Lawrence's landlord, David Land, had access to her bank account. He and his uncle, Ron Allen, gave her rides to town and saw her virtually every day. Yet when the cat lady disappeared from their property, again, none of the lands reported it to the authorities. What's more, when Lawrence went missing, David Land kept using her bank account. The last activity on the account was at the Canadian Tire Store in Bracebridge. Police found that last activity especially suspicious because it was done by bank guard but no card had ever been issued to Joan Lawrence. Police say the only card on her account was in the name of David Land. And consider this, after Joan's friend saw her for the last time, David Land used his card on her bank account on at least four occasions. Joan Lawrence never used her account again. And there's another stunning revelation in Detective Burke's communication with her source, Al Marshall. What he says he saw and heard outside the retirement home 
the final day he saw Joan Lawrence alive. I mean, the last time I saw Lawrence, I saw Walter Land driving a backhoe up towards the north end of the property where she lived. It was after 6 p.m. and it was dark. Around the last time I saw her, I also heard the sound of gunshots. But who fired those shots? What might have been buried with the backhoe? And where was Joan Lawrence? According to Detective Burke, her source, Al Marshall, came to his own conclusion. I believe she never left the property and that she's not alive. After the break, we go looking for the lands. Hi, I'm Bob McEwen from the Fifth Estate. We'd like to talk to you about Joan Lawrence and the others, whom you recruited to come to the middle of nowhere, and then the family started stealing their money, and then they disappeared. What happened to them? What happened to Joan Lawrence and the others? Big news, sir. At this family wedding a few years back, the lands of Ontario's Muskoka region appeared a happy, upstanding group, pillars of their church, active at the local Christian school. And they seemed to be doing more good work at the three retirement homes they operated, offering senior citizens in need a place in the Muskoka woods where they could spend their sunset years. The residents had no idea their landlords were known not just for a history of charity, but a history of crime. It's, it's unreal that one family can have so many criminals. The oldest land brother David had a criminal record for breaking and entering and theft. His younger brother Walter Land's record began at the age of 18 with property offenses, breaking and entering, fraud, and impersonating an officer. By 25, their sister Catherine Land had been to jail for drugs, theft, and extortion. She eventually would be convicted of stealing $30,000 from that Christian school where she was treasurer. But their criminal past would remain hidden until the late 1990s, when one by one, four elderly residents of land retirement homes began to disappear. Doogie Grant, John Crofts, John Semple, and that woman who lived in a shed with 30 cats, Joan Lawrence. Ontario Provincial Police Detective Aaron Burke soon concluded it wasn't a missing persons case, but homicide. I don't believe that Lawrence moved off of the property. Her body may be buried on the property. Those police documents the Fifth Estate recently managed to get unredacted reveal what Detective Burke's investigation found. Through a police source named Al Marshall, he too lived in one of the retirement homes, and quietly gave investigators information about what happened there around the time Joan Lawrence went missing. And it all began with a lie. Marshall advised me of the following information, that on Saturday, November 28, 1998, David Land telephoned him. According to Burke's report, Al Marshall said David Land instructed him to intentionally mislead the police about Joan Lawrence's whereabouts. He advised me that the police tried to speak with me about Lawrence. I was supposed to tell him that I saw her on Friday in Bracebridge with him. But the truth, according to Marshall, was that he hadn't seen Joan Lawrence for about three weeks. And remember how Marshall described what happened when he did last see her? The backhoe mysteriously digging on the property after dark, and the gunshots he heard about the same time. Marshall told the police that in the three weeks since he last saw Lawrence, he came to believe something bad had already happened to her. I believe she never left the property and that she's not alive. Among the police documents we got was a search warrant application with crucial details right there in black and white. The crime, murder. The victim, Joan Lawrence. The suspects, her landlord David Land and his uncle Ron Allen according to Detective Burke. I believe that David Land and Ron Allen have committed the offense of murder in the first degree upon victim Joan Dorothy Lawrence sometime between October 28, 1998 through to November 27, 1998. And the notes kept by Burke show why she was convinced that they were responsible. 
I believe Lawrence's death occurred to prevent her from reporting frauds, thefts, mistreatment, and neglect she was enduring at the hands of David Lamb and Ron Allen. But to this day, the remains of Joan Lawrence and the others have never been found. And with no bodies, no murder charges have been laid. Though three of the lands were convicted of stealing about $100,000 of their residents' pension money. Ultimately, Aaron Burke would leave the Ontario Provincial Police. But even after two decades, the OPP insists the investigation remains open, and they still refuse to discuss it. And what about the Land family today? Well, their uncle Ron Allen reportedly moved away from Muskoka. After our first story about them last fall, Paul Land lost his job teaching English at a Christian university in Korea. Walter Lamb is now in Toronto, out of prison after an 11-year sentence for robbing elderly people at knife or gunpoint. He's now a repairman who advertises a senior citizen discount. And David Lamb is in Toronto too, where he's been on the staff of a community college and does repair jobs with his brother. We caught up with him one morning when he stopped for a coffee. Mr. Lamb, hi, I'm Bob McEwen from the Fifth Estate at CBC News. We'd like to talk to you about Joan Lawrence and the others who disappeared. I think you know that the uh, Ontario Provincial Police has been in, have been investigating you over the years. They believe Joan Lawrence was the victim of a first degree murder and they believe you and your uncle Ron Allen are the suspects. David Land had nothing to say about the four people who went missing from his family's care. No explanation, no denial. You never reported the missing. Mr. Land respectfully declines our request for an interview. The hardest sibling to track down was Catherine Land. We found Facebook photos of her from a few years ago and discovered six last names she's been using and at least a dozen addresses in Canada and the US. Then we got reports she'd been seen back in Muskoka in Bracebridge, Ontario, often at the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We bumped into her recently in downtown Bracebridge. Catherine. Hi, I'm Bob McEwen from the Fifth Estate. We'd like to talk to you about Joan Lawrence and the others, whom you recruited to come to the middle of nowhere, and then the family started stealing their money, and then they disappeared. What happened to them? What happened to Joan Lawrence and the others? Catherine Land may claim it's fake news, but those four senior citizens have now been missing for 20 years. She and two of her siblings were convicted of stealing their residents' money before and after they went missing. And two of her family members were identified as the prime suspects in the murder case. It is also real news and the sad truth that no one has ever been held accountable for those disappearances years ago the mystery that still haunts Muskoka. <laughs>